Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, a warm welcome to you too. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great Power Apps content and practical solutions. Today I've got something really exciting for you. We're going to dive into how to enhance our Power Apps experience by using next and previous buttons with the modern tab control right here. This is a game changer for navigation in your applications. And I can't wait to show you how it's done. So let's get started. Now, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I did go over the tab, um, how to navigate with the tab in your application using the classic controls. So as you can see here, this is how it works. Next, next, see, and if I click the tab, um, as you can see, the buttons also update as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing in modern controls and it's it's so, some of the same formulas but it's a slightly different so let's go over that let's go go to our modern tab screen okay so the first thing we're going to do is let's add our modern tab our modern control tab so if you go over here to the insert we're already in that you have the classic and then you have the modern and i'm gonna come down here and click on tab list let me bring that down okay so now we just have, you know, one item one, two, three, and I, I don't want these items and I want something else and I don't want to use an array. Um, if I use an array, what I'm going to do is it, it won't work. So let's go to the app and let's go to on start. And let me hit enter here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a table. We're going to create a global variable and that global variable, we're going to set that table to it. So let's call this uh, tab data. And let's say table. And this takes records. So we're going to say tab name. Sort of like we did the last in the last one. And say tab value. Well, tab value. One. And I'm just gonna make this a little quicker. I'm just gonna copy this, copy this, paste, paste. Close that off and close that off again. And let me put my semicolon there. So let's call this, let's say truck. Since I only have three tabs, let's do this. Three, or well, all I want is three tabs. Call this bike. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our control and we're gonna set it to what we just created, tab data. Of course, that's not it because as you can see, it's still blank. So we have to come over here on the right-hand side of the panel. Let's click on edit. And let's select tab name, add. And let me come over here and uh, go to app and then let's kind of run on start. All right, there you go. There it is. Okay. So now let me do something here. Let me come over here. It makes a lot of sense when we do stuff like this. So let's come here. And let's keep track of what the variable is. So let's come here. So current tab. Okay, current. So right now it's nothing. So let's go set that. So the current tab is how we're gonna keep track of what tab we're, we're on. Um, and it's also going to work with our previous button to previous and next button. So let me add that really quick. So let's add this button. Let's come down here, bring that down here. Put my next button here. Next. And let's come over here. Previous. 
All right. So now, now that we've done that, now let's go. Go. We're going to go to our our um, screen. Oh, we're there already. On visible. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say update context current tab to one. And that's on our on visible screen. So in order for us to see it, we have to go out, come back in and it's set. So right now it's one. Okay. So now, um, let's add some, let's add some containers that represents our corresponding, um, controls that go with each tab. So let me come here and I want to say, let's come here container let's add our container let's bring that down just a little bit okay and let's do this and let's give each container a different color but just know that within these containers, you're going to have controls, drop downs, text, um, input summary boxes and stuff like that. So let's copy this, create another one. And let's give this one a different color. Let's say green. Okay. And let's create another one. Let's give this one a different color and let's call it, let's say, let's say orange. That's boom. Okay. So now that we've done that, um, we've set the default current tab to one. So what we're going to do is for each container, we're going to give them a tab number. So we're going to say, you know what, if, if the current tab is equal to one, I want this container to show if it's equal to two. I want this container to show if it's three, this container should show. So let's come here and let's go to the visible, the visible property the container. And let's say current So basically this is the same as saying, okay, if current tab is equal to one, you know, if it's true, then show it. It just evaluates it for us. And let's go to the second container, go to the visible property, say current tab equal to two. If it's visible, show it. Let me copy this copy. And let's come to this other container. Let's go to the visible on visible property. I mean, a visible property, excuse me. Let's say three, three. Okay. All right. So now let's go and change this value here. So let's come here. Now, because it's part of the on visible, we have to go out the screen and come back in. See that? Let's change this to three. We have to go with the because it's the on visible property. Like I said, we have to go out and come back. So it's on visible. Now it's orange and let's set it back to one. One. There you go. So as you can see, you saw the tabs change. All right, now how does our buttons here, how can we go to the next and previous, you know, so let's come here in our previous, we're going to say on select and we're going to say if current tab is greater than one. We're going to update context. We're going to update our, 
current tab to current tab minus one. That's if it's greater than one. Oh, I've got to put another one. Now, because we're on one and it's not greater than one, you know, it's not going to do it. It's not really going to do anything. See, it's not going to go past, you know, into the negatives. All right. Now let's go to our next and see what happens. So let's come to our next on select. So now we're going to say, let me make sure I did this right. Okay. That's right. Okay. So let me come here. So I'm going to say if current tab is less than we're going to count rows. So we're going to have a get a count. You can also just say three, but let's do this. So it counts how many records there are, which is three. So I could also just put the number there. And so if it's, if it's less than three, then, then whatever the count rows are, the, the number of rows in there, update context. And what we're going to update, we're going to update our current tab, current tab, current tab plus one. And then close that out. All right, let's see if this works. Let's come here. Two, three. It doesn't go any further. All right, so so that's working the way it should. Now, as you can see, even though it's working, these are not updating. We want we need that to update. Now, the way that we get that to update is we have to go to the default. Well, actually, one more thing. So now. I don't want my user to get confused. So when they get to this last one, I want it to, when they get on the on current tab one, I want this to be disabled. So let's select this and let's go to our display mode. Okay. It's display mode. Where are you? Display mode. And so we're going to say, If current tab, if it's um, equal to one, display mode uh, dot disabled. Then let's come here. Let's do that. Uh, oh, I forgot the comma. comma copy all right see now it's disabled now let me come here i'm going to use the same formula but change it so display mode now what do you think is going to be you guessed it right if it's equal to three all right so let's see what happens so it's disabled disabled okay and that's because it's equal to three current tab is equal to three it once this turns to one this gets disabled excellent now the last thing we need to do for this to be complete now we need to hook this up to our our um, modern tab so the way that we're going to do that the way we're going to do that now let's go back to our now remember we have this tab value here. All right. And this tab value, it represents the value of the tab. So one, two, three. So we're going to use this tab value. So now we're going to go, let's select this. And then we're going to go to our default. Where is it at? Default selected items. And in here, we're going to say look up. So look up tab data 
where our tab value is equal to this right here, the current tab. So what am I doing wrong? Uh, what did I call it? Is it tab value? Tab value. Tab data tab value. Okay, let me go back to here. Oh, I, I had it in. Oh, my bad. I had it in lowercase. It's case sensitive. Okay. So now look in the table where the tab value, those numbers, is equal to the current tab, which is this. And so it'll just, it'll, it'll grab whatever that value is, whatever that name is. It'll grab a tab name and put it there. So now let's come here. All right. Do this. See how it moves. So it works. Now if I click here. Ooh, that part isn't working. All right, we're going to go to the on change of this control. And this will I have to, I have to go offline and figure this out. So what I have to do is on the on change, whenever anything is changed in this control, update context, current tab, and then it'll be tab list two dot selected dot tab value. So whenever anything is changed here, that's what happens. So let's come here, do this, as you can see, it changes. Previous. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.